beautiful pre-independence day morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We now have our choir with the influence.
God our Father, we celebrate you in another way today, for you have given us a joy that is unspeakable. You have written your name, redeemed, on all who have come to know you and serve you in the beauty of holiness. We acknowledge that you are holy and righteous and pure and true. We see your and we works in all of creation from the things that are seen and unseen to the simple grain of sand to the complexity of the galaxies. Lord, you astound us and we are in awe of your presence. There is nothing about you that does not thrill us. You are the architect of all creation, the giver of every good and perfect gift the joy of our salvation, and the lover of our souls. Lord, you love, your love is so wonderful to us, for you care for us more than we can ever know or think about. Even after we have sinned, you seek us out to save us from ourselves, to help us, heal us, and restore us. You take away our shame and our guilt and give us beauty for our ashes. You always seek the betterment of our rugged, tossed, and sometimes stormy lives. You forgive us because of our human and yet sinful nature. We cannot even forgive ourselves, but you always help us to realize that the virus offender can turn and find grace. You teach us that your grace is sufficient, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us all from cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us and helping us to forgive others. Lord, how can we give you praises that you so rightly deserve? Our lips should always utter thanks and praise to you for your blessings. You are a God who gives to those who ask and to those who do not even appreciate you. Thanks for the providence in our lives as you supply our needs regardless of who we are and what we may have. You gave us when we, our stores, were empty and even when we had you allowed our cups to overflow. Thank you. Thank you for our government, our country, 50 years of independence. Thanks for those who had the wisdom and were guided by your Holy Spirit to seek the freedom of others from economic depravity and social injustice. We thank you for the freedom of worship and assembly and freedom of speech which so many persons take for granted. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for healing, food, shelter, clothing, and clothing. But thank you most of all for Jesus. Thank you. Thanks for his sacrifice and love and his forgiveness. Thanks for the gift of eternal life. Lord, condition our hearts and minds to accept this love and graciousness that you continue to endow us with, and may you receive all the honor, glory, and praise from our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord's prayer is
praise God. And that's the blessing. As the praises go up, the blessings will come down on all of us. I'd like to also acknowledge our birthday and anniversary celebrants. <coughs> on July 10th, we have LaShonda Simmons. And on July 11th, we have Maurice Clinton. And so we'd like to sing for them.
grace and mercy in light of our darkness as you illuminate us in the light of your truth and love. Hear our prayer and our understanding. Hear our heart and our making. And help us so that we may make right and courageous choices. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Lift every voice and sing, which will be followed by the notices and pronouncements by Sister Lina Allen, <coughs> or Lydia's brother. <laughs>
morning, church. Good morning. And a happy independence. Thanking God that we are once again here. Of course, the day is tomorrow. But you know, as human beings, we are looking forward to that day with God's help and mercy. It's one thing with us behaviors now. We believe in our God. Yeah. We don't play with that at all. So when we speak, we know that we have his insurance. Thanking him for his loving kindness and bringing us this far. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Um, notices are this morning. I have, other than what's in the bulletin, I have one. Does anyone have any other, any notice that they'd like to uh, have announced here? They can bring it up, please. Central Church of God has invited the women's ministry. Their women's ministry have invited us to their 41st anniversary. And they will be starting on the 13th through the 14th, that's Thursday and Friday of the month of July. And their speaker will be the Reverend Agatha Martin out of Mount Zion and Eight Mile Rock. So we're looking forward to the number of us women attending. Agatha is a pretty good speaker, and I really enjoy her. So ladies, let's do our thing and go <coughs> at least one night. 13 or 14 at Central Church of God to come, to come out and celebrate with them. Thank you. Um, our <coughs> own notices here are a confirmation classes as usual held every Saturday at 3 p.m. right here at church. And you can zoom as well. There's a passcode in the notice. And I won't quote the number because you probably would get it. You can always call the church and get it. As a matter of fact, the class code is al Qaeda. <laughs> Who's al Qaeda? <laughs> 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 Who's al Qaeda? <laughs> okay, Pastor. That's you. Now, the organizations that are on break during the July and August Sunday School, Boys Brigade, Women's Fellowship, Men's Fellowship, giving us a break. We need it. Dress down, I've already, I think commenced already. Let's just remember that. July and August, you dress down and wear comfortable clothing because it is very, very hot. Now, the Grand Bahama Methodist expresses gratitude to all members for your faithful support and attendance at the following events last week. The decorating committee, Sister Carla, and the executives of the Circuit Women's Fellowship. Reverend Seymour, the organizers of the celebration service for Sister Diane and Michelle last, held last Sunday. Vacation Bible School is the fun time for the kids. Make sure your kids come on out. All right, or is it over? Did we have a week already? <laughs> okay, good. But yeah, we're going to do for the rest of the week, uh, the, the summer holidays. We need another one. Anyway, a great big thank you to all who helped. The junior helpers were, I'm going to call your names because it's very good, it's a blessing, and you'll come out and, and assist. Abigail, Allison, Anissa, Dexter, and Sion Anthony were the junior helpers. Our speakers at the Sunday School were the Reverend Alan Barryoon, Reverend El Kena, Brother Burke, and Sister Lolita. <laughs> They were the speakers. And the monetary donors. Sorry. That's Reverend Lewis. Oh, okay. There you're sitting up front. Okay, Reverend Lewis, you were there as well. Um, thank you ever so much. Our monetary donors were Reverend Lewis again, Sister Spade, Dolores, Gloria, Isula, Shirley, Debbie, Yolanda. Ro, Merlin Cooper, Al Marie Williams, Carolyn Fox, and Max Smith. The kitchen staff were Sister Alberta, the supervisor, Gloria, Julie, Veronica, Shauna, Patricia, and Sister Dolores. The children were treated to a very, very sumptuous meal, meal sumptuous meals and snacks during that time. Special thanks to Sister Shabbos. I hope I have a Pronounced correctly, Shabu's, Burnside, Salvanzi. She came in from Florida, although she was 
as a matter of St. Paul's from way back, she came in to assist. Brother Charles, Chucky, Bridgewater, the backbone, behind the scene man, as always, we give him thanks as well. Okay. May God continue to bless us as we strive to do his work. And of course, the sick and the shy, and especially our members, Vera Grant, Gloria Archer, Charles and Evelyn, Nightburn, Ruth Bethel, Wanderlei Hamilton, Carol Rowe, Evangeline Saunders, Eric Duncan, and Fred Cooper. And special prayers requests. There are a number of special prayers requests by Senior Alu Kamari Lang, that's Sister Anne's uh, grandson, I believe. Uh, he's still facing medical challenges. Sister Eleanor, Barry, Sister Barry Brown, Sister Carol Rowe, Sister Sheila Grant, and others, Reverend Vines, continue to pray for our sick and our family and friends and relatives of our members of this church. Um, okay, and this very good program, Sister Carla, we put together this, um, this in Valencia, oh, Valencia, yes, right, that's right. This year. A very good uh, program put together with all the past prime ministers and the national symbols of the Bahamas and some write up. Very nice. A wonderful job. Thank you. Okay, uh, so there are no more announcements. I will kindly ask you to stand for the auditorium prayer. Thank you. Uh, just thank you so much. This is indeed a wonderful occasion to be here at our 50th, standing, not sick, everybody able to walk and talk and jump and sing and praise you, Lord. You are wonderful. You are great. You are awesome. The song we sang this now, awesome, awesome, awesome God you are. There's none like you. We give you praise and we give you thanks for this wonderful day that you enabled us to come forth this morning and give you praise upon praise and thanks upon thanks. So this offering that will be taken, it will go out to the poor and do, do their bodies well. There's one thing when I met in this church here, we are in this community and we are part of this community and we assist this community. So we give you thanks and as you make your offering today, just remember that this is going to go back out into the community. So we give you praise, Father God, and thanks. And on our way home, you guide us that we will arrive to us home safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Come and put your offering. We get ready with anybody.
for the hand. So I put up the I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arm, then bow my head and worship the Lord and bless the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the dogs for my master's kingdom for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and with, if you will deal loyal, loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left, or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, when you go with this man, she said, I will. So they sent, they sent away their sister, Rebecca, and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed, they blessed Rebecca and said, may you, your asses, become thousands of men rats. May your offspring gain, gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, <coughs> mounted the camels, and followed the man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Bear Cloud Roy and was settled in the nearby head. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field and looking up he saw camels coming and Rebecca took look up and when she, when, when she saw Isaac she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant who is the man over there walking in the field to meet, to meet us the servant said it is my master so she took her veil and covered herself and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Then Isaac brought her to the to his mother, Sarah, Sarah's friend. He took Rebecca. She became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was converted after his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is from Romans chapter 7 verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want I agree that the law is good but in fact it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells within me. For I know that the good does not dwell within me, that is, in my flesh. For the desire to do the good lies close at hand, but not the ability. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched person that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with my mind I am enslaved to the law of God, but with my flesh I am enslaved to the law of sin. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
We also have our Vice President of the conference here, Mr. Bert Lightborn. Uh, and our preacher, Sister Gwen, we all haven't seen any more preachers, uh, potential preachers, so I call out their names. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, we give you thanks for all that you've done, our sister Rosalind, for making the cakes on this special occasion. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if everybody will get a taste of that. <laughs> I wanted to do one too, you know, but I didn't find any baking powder. <laughs> I didn't want to make a pancake. <laughs> So I couldn't bother. We also have um, Charles Steve Water, who is our uh, steward, and I think he has to stay for a minute. But we yeah, are so grateful that we can worship God together on this beautiful Independence Sunday. It would be remiss of me if I didn't call on our Vacation Bible School students to teach you that song that I have learned. You know, I've got peace, love, and joy. So I'm going to ask them to come forward, all of those members who are here, so they can teach that song. Yes, come forward, please. Don't be nervous. I'll show you. <laughs> I learned it too. Come forward, all the members of the Education Bible School. Yes, we're going to, we're going to teach you how to, how to sing that song, I've got peace like a river. I've got joy like a river. This is just our commercial break. Since we didn't have a children's time, this is our children's time. Amen? Amen. 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 Citizenship is in heaven, 
And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of glory by the poster that all enables him to make all things subject to himself. Let us pray. O gracious God, Heavenly Father, give you thanks for your word and the power of your word. The word that you say will not return to you, Lord. No artificial work spoken by me, but the comforter is telling us on his silence. The Lord who is our rock, our help, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Because it is Independence Sunday, or the day before Independence Day, I have chosen to leave behind the scripture passages read for today and to use the passage coming from St. Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. The Philippians book or letter, chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, as a text for today. I believe it speaks of citizenship and some of the things that will go along with it as we seek to move on as an independent nation. Fifty years truly is an accomplishment. It reminds me of Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream. Though many of the visionaries who started out as architects of the nation are not here, I truly do believe that this is what they had envisioned when they were laying the foundation. So we must carry on the building of the nation. We dare not beat ourselves for the mistakes of the past, but move on in the direction of spiritual, social, economic, physical, and mental stability. Till the road you draw leads unto your God. March on, Muhammad. Should I stop there? Yes? <laughs> the Philippian church is truly a church that was loved by Paul. The church supported him well in his ministry. He had grown to love them as he ministered to them as well. It was from his letter, such words as these that came in Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, which you have both learned and received and heard and seen and made. Do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Some of the beautiful words of Paul as he ministered to the church at Philippi, which he really loved. Citizenship is a word which means that an individual has an allegiance to the state, and each state determines the conditions under which it will recognize persons as its citizens. The conditions under which the status can be withdrawn. Sometimes people are identified by the country of which they are a part. And I'm not going to use any examples here. It might not be true, but if you were born there and bred there, there's a song that goes... No, not born there. There's a song that goes... You can take the man from out of the island for them anywhere in this great big world that you can. You can take the man from out of the island, but you can't take the island from out of the island. Is that true? <laughs> so anywhere you go, you'll be blaming them. <laughs> Isn't that so? Or America, 
or Dominica, or Petition, or, you know, you get, you get what I'm saying. Yes. yes. All right. So Paul was telling the Philippian church that they had citizenship, and it meant that they were living their lives as though they were in heaven. Imagine that. <coughs> they had dual citizenship. Citizenship on earth, as well as citizenship in heaven. And it must have been something good about the Philippian church that Paul saw in them. Such good qualities. Qualities which gave them the status to live in both places. And on earth. In heaven and on earth. This is what the Christian life affords us. For when Jesus said that he is the resurrection and the life, he meant that those who loved him and served him, their lives start here and now in this minute. We don't become a citizen of heaven when we die. We become a citizen of heaven while we are living. You understand? This is an automatic thing. Uh, you know, some, I'm not going to speak about that thing because I'm going to get in trouble here. And so, you become a citizen as soon as you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you are without a country. Isn't that so? Yes. Jesus says, He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And those who live and believe in me shall never die. This is indeed Jesus' invitation to us for citizenship. Because since we are going to live forever, it means that Jesus has gone to find a place for us to live. And in that place, we will be with him forever, which he has gone to prepare for us. You know, heaven and earth has a special relationship. And that relationship is whatever we bind on earth, we also can bind in heaven. You know that? And what we lose on earth, we can also lose in heaven. And when we say our, our Father prayer, don't we always say, our Father who art in heaven, we expect God to hear us. Isn't that so? So we have a relationship with heaven that says that the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who repents. You see that relationship? They cheer us on. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. We cannot see those persons, but they are cheering us on every day. All of our grandmothers and grandfathers and all those good people there. Come on, come on, they're cheering us. Come on, come on now, come on. They're cheering us. And so we can boast as a nation, but remember, with economic prosperity comes all the fringe benefits. And those benefits others would like to enjoy as well. But with those fringe benefits also comes some unlikely fringe benefits. Things like crime will come, like those that exist in big cities. I don't know if you can remember, but I can remember when the crime situation has changed in the Bahamas. We used to have one murder, maybe every two or three or five years or something. Well, it was just not unheard of. Now, you can't count them on your fingers and toes. It does so much. And you wonder where you go wrong. We have political upheavals and all sorts of rights. We have children rights, we have gay rights, we have abortion rights, we have Black Lives Matter, we have animal rights, we have uh, marital rape issues and abuses, and so on and so forth. And we even have global warming. The climate changes with many persons thought of as being silly when persons were mentioning, mentioning it some years ago. Just during the past week, we recorded some of the most highest uh, heat temperatures on the earth. In the triple digits, we recorded the heat. And so even if you had your air conditioning on, you were still sweating. It is showing that the earth atmosphere is changing. There were sharks who were swimming by the shoreline I saw on the news. And I guess it was because the ocean was so hot, they were looking for a place to really cool off. Or the fish became closer to the shores. Yet, 
He cut down trees to make parking lots and lawns. He said, this lawn looks nice. And he cut down trees, it looks too bushy. But when I was taking my uh, biology, uh, it, I learned that trees take in carbon and they give off oxygen. And oxygen is needed to cool down the earth. If you look around you, in most places, all we've been doing is cutting down trees and hardly anybody has been planting any. Is there any reason why we're getting hotter every year? We need to start planting trees, my brothers and sisters. It is as simple as that. And then we can look for the atmosphere to perhaps come back. We need to find ways of taking care of our seas and our lands. Some years ago, a friend of mine threw a bottle in the water and he said, well, why didn't you do that? And he said, oh, don't worry, it will disappear. The seas doesn't make anything disappear. What you throw in there is going to stay in there. And just a few days ago, I saw a young man drink and throw his bottle in the grass. And I said to myself, who's going to pick that up for him or for us? What we don't realize is that the more we litter, it's going to stay there. It's going to be bad for us. Generations before us have helped us, and now we have to help the generation after us. We don't want them, as I saw on television, they were eating some fish, or they were going to order some fish, and the fish that they were going to order wasn't even on the menu because everything was gone. We don't want that to happen. What we want to happen is that we're all healthy, we're all happy, and we all can enjoy the atmosphere that God has given to us. We continue to poison ourselves by polluting our water tables. I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom and gloom, but it was Karl Barth, one of the great theologians, who said that the theologians should always have a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the next. That makes sense. We are in heaven and we are on earth. <laughs> but we haven't left yet. We have to still live here and to live peaceably and to do all that we can. We have to not be so boasting, but to be humble in the face of what we achieve. I heard on, on the radio uh, not so long ago one man was boasting about our dollar. Oh, our dollar could stand up against the US dollar one for one. And all those big countries are so often, they have to really value their dollar, but we don't have to do that. But the truth is, my brothers and sisters, we depend so heavily on tourism. There's not much uh, industry that we have. We can't even support ourselves to feed ourselves. Everybody's in his computer. The man said, uh, you have to plant corn <laughs> because computers don't feed persons. All right, we have to plant in our yards, our backyard gardens, we have to plant in our, around us, we have to put more things down. We cannot boost of our dollar because the tourists don't come here for a year, our dollar gone. The brothers and sisters, let us consider our 50 years. I've listened to the talk shows sometime, and I hate to hear when issues arise that the church is silenced. Who's the church? The church is not the four walls. The church is all of us. Let me tell you, sir, about turning your children to Sunday school and all the rest of it so that you can put the fear of God in them. You don't bring them, you don't send them. And they have no fear of God in them, and I don't respect anybody. And if you say anything to me, I'm going to cuss you all, I'll go ahead of And that is the truth. For persons with the fear of God in them, they will do better. Train the child in a way in which they will go, and when they get older, they may not depart from it. Doesn't the Bible say that? Yes, you have to start from small. Jimmy, bend the tree while it's long. Jimmy, bend the tree while it's young. Every child should know right from wrong. If you wait until that tree go big, Jimmy, you're going to be too weak. Jimmy, bend the tree while it's young. See, I'm behaving. I listen to my baby songs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 
brothers and sisters, we like to say the Bahamas is a Christian nation, but Bahamas is democratic, not theocratic. Get where I'm coming from? It's not run by God, it is run by mere mortals. With many religions here, we only think about the Christian religion, but we do have many other religions here. And we will forever wrestle with issues. And we should never point to things because all of us have our work to do. In the world of the blind, it is said the one the man with one eye is king. In a society where everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes, there is total chaos. We must agree to disagree on certain things. And where there is life, there is hope. A nation is great who acknowledges God as a Lord. A nation is great that humbles themselves and seeks God's face and turns away from their wicked ways. Then will they hear from God, and then will God cure all of our diseases and heal our land. A nation is great who repents. A nation is great when no innocent blood is shed on the streets and love is in every home. A nation is great when there's food on all tables and no one is in a remote area starving. A nation is great when the family that prays together stays together. A nation is great when our leaders seek God's face to make decisions for God's people. I was telling someone, I do not think that I would be around for the next 50 years. I'm more closer to 150 now. But some of the young ones do the year. And we have inherited from those who were before us. A good inheritance. Let us pass the baton on to the next generation. That godly and good heritage. My quotation is, the soul of the nation is in the hearts, minds, and lives of the will of the people. They are its architect and builders and keepers of flame and bearers of torch into the new day. I repeat, bearers of the torch into the new day. You understand that phrase? Yes, you do. Doesn't matter where you are, this family or that party. We all have one purpose, to live together in peace and unity. Forward, onward, upward, together is how we move. Lift up your head to the rising sun in the harbor land, to the road you draw, lead unto your God. March up, Bahama land. Happy independence, everyone. Amen. Let us pray. Oh gracious God, I have Father, and I have sign this land, this your land, this land, this my land. You have placed us here to tend the land and the people, and to share, and to be little grass in our areas. We pray for the nation, O oh Lord. You will always have our struggles. But we are still one people. We will always have our difficulties and disagreements. We help us never to share the innocent blood. We will all seek justice and freedom for all. And no man is free unless every man is free. And so, Lord, we bring for your government, our opposition, and all of those who are instrumental in leadership. And drop in yours, visit us, and be shores. And bring before you our teachers and institutions who learn in our own schools and walls. And also, we bring before you Queen's College and all of those other schools that are not Methodists, their teachers. We bring before you the students and young people. What their minds are, the garden. Help them to grow good things in there. And to share and to divulge 
all that they learn in schools in the proper time and place. We thank you for the graduations that have been held and those who have excelled and pray for those who are weak in every subject area. We bring before you those of vacation by the schools. We are thankful for all that we have and those who have helped and those other churches that are having. We pray for theirs as well. We pray for those who are behind the prison bars, whether they're innocent or guilty. Lord, those who cannot have money to pay for lawyer fees and the rest of it, who languish behind the prison bars, those who have been set free by DNA. We pray for our, our police force, defense force, and those who patrol the waters and the lands. We pray for those who are in beds of affliction this morning, those whose bodies are up with pain, those who the doctors have given up on, those whose medication doesn't work anymore. We know that you are Dr. Jesus and there's nothing that you cannot do. So touch them, O Lord, right now from the crown of their head to the soul of their feet, every blood vessel, every sinew, every nerve, every cell, every muscle, Lord, touch you and restore. We pray for those who need comforting, those who have lost loved ones during the past days, weeks, months, and years, those who really miss and their lives have been changed because they have lost their loved ones. We pray for those who are unemployed, God may you find or help them to find work, that they may not be idle or return to crime. We pray before you our church, and the church militant and universal. Lord, as we grapple with issues, as we continue to minister to your people, as we become the voice for those who cannot speak, and those who are abused, and those who are trampled upon. We pray for the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and America, with all of our bishops, all of our ministerial staff, we pray for all those here, and the Grand Bahama Circle. For our people and those who visit us, Lord, we bring them before you. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us in all of our decisions. Help us in all of our journey of life. So that even at the end of life, we can smile and say, as John Wesley said, the best of all, God is with us. Bless your people, O oh Lord, and bless this man. Bless the activities that are ahead. May no one be so drunk as to kill somebody on the road and driving or forget what day it is or what time it is or what they're celebrating. But let all be sober minded and share with others who do not have. And may your name be glorified, for this is your nation and your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray.
full of history. Thank you very much, Sister Val Brown. I may God bless you. I see many things in there that we can learn from and read from. And the even youth, youth, uh, you can see what is here. Please read it. Please keep it. It's a part of your history. And you are the ones who are going to pass it on for the next 50 years. And so the symbols and the pledge and the flag and the songs, they're not going to change. But you can add yours to it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Happy Independence, everybody. Thank you. We bring our service to a close just now with the closing hymn, I Vow to Be My Country, after which we'll have the benediction and the pledge of the national anthem of the
before we leave, I'd like to say thanks to Sister Butler for my beautiful stool. And may God bless her as she continues to sow. Receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you.